Hey guys, Soul Refuge WF White here once again. Good to be here. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, news here from Catholic News Service. Uh, Pope Francis will venerate Mary at Mexico Shrine next year. So uh, Mary worship or the devotion to Mary, very, very common within the Roman Catholic system. Next year, next Feb, next February, uh, the Pope's going to make a visit over there to Mexico, and there he's going to venerate Mary at the shrine. So uh, if you don't know what a shrine is, it is usually a statue or an image of some sort. And people will worship that. They will put flowers there. They will put all sorts of things to honor and venerate that image or statue. And that's what's taken place here. Uh, it's been going on for centuries over there in Mexico. Uh, this is uh, very common with the Roman Catholic system. What they do is they have shrines all over the world. You'll have shrines uh, at Fatima, Lourdes. Uh, Medjugorje, and, and people go there. They'll take trips, spend thousands of dollars, travel there. They think there's some special power there, folks. It's idolatry. Uh, I, I know I'm a former Roman Catholic, and this is heavy duty. Millions are still in bondage to this uh, idolatry. Few speak out against it in what you would call the evangelical churches. So let's read a little here. On the Feast of Our Lady of Guadalupe, Pope Francis announced that he would travel to the Marian Shrine in Mexico City and pray to Mary so that Christian communities may become oases and rivers of mercy. To ask her this in a strong way, I will travel to venerate her at her shrine on February 13th. There I will ask this for all of America, of whom she is especially a mother, the Pope said. So uh, this stuff is frowned upon in the Word of God. I mean, it's so clear. If people knew the Word of God for themselves, they would turn away from these things. They would turn away from this idolatry. That's what I did, folks. And it's the scriptures, it's the truth of God's Word that does that. Uh, the Bible said, Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So if you're Roman Catholic today, I encourage you dig into the scriptures. You have a choice to make because you're going to see if there's a contradiction between the word of God and what is being promoted here by the church of Rome. So he's going to make a trip there. Uh, he's going to travel to venerate her. He says, I'm going to do this. I will ask her for all of uh, America, of whom she's especially uh, a mother. He said he's going to travel to the Marian Shrine in Mexico City, pray to Mary so that Christian communities may become oases and rivers of mercy. The, he believes by making this trip, he, this, this veneration, this devotion to Mary, uh, that, that Mary's going to do something for him, for, for the church. Okay, that's why he is doing that, folks. Uh, this... Uh, this uh, idol of Mary over there in Guadalupe, as I said, back in 1531, that's when uh, Juan Diego believed he saw an apparition and appearance of Mary. And uh, this is very common, as I said, and they usually will make a statue or an image out of what they believe they saw. And that's what you see in that little photo there. You'll see that image of our uh, Lady of Guadalupe. So uh, this is what the Pope is doing. He's making his trip because he believes by venerating her and, 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 and worship, giving the, the devotion to her that something is going to happen. That's why he's doing it. That's why people go to these uh, places, as I said, all over the world, folks. Once again, I'm a former Roman Catholic. Uh, the word venerate, here we have it. Let's take, check it out. Venerate. To feel or show deep respect for someone or something that is considered great, holy, etc. To regard with reverential respect or with, with, with admiring deference. To honor as an icon or a relic with a ritual act of devotion. So, uh, you know, if you don't know the word of God for yourself, you'll fall into the trap. You'll be sucked into this bondage. Folks, I'm here to tell you God is not behind this. He's not with this, folks. I know the Spirit of God pulled me out of this idolatry. So here they promote it, and, and, and he makes no bones about it, the Pope, that God is with us. I'm here to tell you, I stand upon the Word of God and tell you God is not with this at all. 
nor with any of the other apparitions or any type of uh, Mary worship. You, you, you simply got to go to the scriptures for yourself to see what the scriptures say. Look on uh, the screen. It says, Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Now, that's known as the second commandment, folks. That's in, found in uh, Exodus chapter 20. And growing up as a young Roman Catholic, I, I never even heard this because we had our little catechism. And in the catechism, this, <laughs> this was taken out, if you can believe it. They removed the second commandment. And we were taught, if you're a Roman Catholic, you know what I'm talking about. We learned the second commandment this way. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That's how, that's how we learned it. So we never heard this, folks. And you say, wait a second, how, how can this be? If they took it out, they would leave only uh, nine commandments. Well, you know what they did? Exodus chapter 20, verse 17 deals with covetousness. That's only one verse. They took that and made two commandments out of it. One regarding coveting your neighbor's wife and the other regarding coveting your neighbor's goods. So that's how they made up. They made two commandments out of that one verse, and that's why you don't see this in their catechisms, folks. You'll find it in their Bible, but most Catholics don't read the Bible. And here's the deal. God's word forbids this idolatry, and the Roman Catholic system is rampant with idolatry, filled with statues all over uh, the place, folks. As I said, you'll have Marian shrines throughout the world. Unbelievable stuff. And uh, if you look at the next verse, for there's one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. There's only one mediator, folks. His name is Jesus Christ. Mary could not hear you if she wanted to because it's forbidden in the word of God. The real Mary is in heaven right now, folks. Hear me. But she's not hearing Hail Mary's. That's what the Lord showed me. There's one mediator, folks. You come to that mediator. There's one door. His name is Jesus Christ. He said, I am the door. You don't need a door of jubilee to enter in for mercy, for forgiveness. You go straight to the Lord, folks. That's what I did. And it's the spirit of truth, the spirit of God that pulled me out of that bondage. And it's exactly what that is. Let's go down here. I'll close it out. First Thessalonians Chapter 1, verses 9 to 10. For they themselves show of us what manner, manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. So here's a testimony of people that came out. They turned from their idolatry. What did they do? They turned from idols to serve the living and true God. That's what I did. I turned from the idols of Mary and the Roman Catholic saints to serve the true and living God, folks. You come to the one mediator, the one who died for you. You can be justified by his blood. You can be saved from wrath through him, folks. Read Romans chapter 5. Read the whole chapter. That's your assignment for today. So you see, that's what they did. And it says, and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Folks, hear me. As I speak, you can call upon the Lord and be saved. Hear me. Do it even now. You can call upon the Lord even now. Be saved from the wrath to come and know it. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Ask him to cleanse you with the precious blood that he shed. But he died on the cross for you. That's what I did. I am a former Roman Catholic worshiper of Mary. Lit my candles. Did all the stuff that you guys do if you're a Roman Catholic. Call upon the Lord, folks. He's the one. Time is running short, folks. It's... You know, when I promise another day, and that's why I bring these teachings forth, I leave it there. Be blessed in the Lord Jesus Christ.